In this video, we'll show how to query Apache Iceberg tables via the AWS Glue catalog with ClickHouse. Let's first have a look at this diagram that shows how all the pieces in this architecture fit together. So at the bottom, we have our data in Parquet format, stored in some sort of cloud bucket storage, in this case, S3. So that's the data layer. And then if we go up, we have our metadata layer. And we start with a manifest file that has pointers to Parquet files that make up our iceberg table. It may also store some metadata about those files that make it easier to query the data later on. More manifest files will be created when we ingest or delete data. Next up, we have the manifest list that collects multiple manifest files. And these files track which manifests are part of a specific snapshot. If we go up one more level, we have our metadata file, which ties everything together. It points to the current manifest list or lists for the table. It also contains the table schema, partition specs, and sort orders. And then finally, at the very top of the hierarchy is the catalog, which manages tables and their metadata. And then if we have a look at how it's going to work when we're going to query it, so we're going to send our query. That's going to pull some metadata via the catalog to work out what data needs to be pulled in step three. That's then going to be processed by the ClickHouse query engine. And finally, in step five, we'll get our result. We already have an AWS Glue catalog set up with our Apache Iceberg table. It's in US East 2 in AWS. So I've got an EC2 box running in that region to avoid transferring data across the ocean. And I've got ClickHouse server running on this box. So I'm going to launch my ClickHouse client to connect to the server that I've got running. We need to specify this Glue catalog setting. And then I've got some other settings that I'm going to use as well. We're then going to create ourselves a database called Test. We're going to use the data lake catalog database engine. We need to make sure we have some settings as well. So catalog type must be glue. And then we've got our AWS credentials. So we've got the region, we've got the key, and then we've got the secret. And I've set that up before. And so we can then do show databases. And you can see we've got our test database at the end. We can then do show tables from test. And you can see these are a bunch of tables that we've got. So they're configured sometimes a little bit differently, but mostly the schema is the same. We're going to have a look at some of the columns for one of them. So we're going to use the hits iceberg table. And we'll just get them back as an erase. It's a bit easier to read. And if we scroll up to the top, you can see some of the fields that we've got available to us. There's a hundred plus fields available. I'm just going to write a query that computes the resolution width and height and counts how many times that's happened in that hits iceberg table. And if we run that query, we've got to wait a little bit of time for it to process. We'll speed it up for the video and it takes just over 11 seconds. And you can see 1368 by 554 is the most popular resolution combination. We can also write queries that run against previous snapshots of the iceberg table, which is called time travel. So to demonstrate this, we're going to write a query against the time travel table. So you can see the count of records is 100 million. We can't get a list of snapshots using ClickHouse yet, but that will come in a future version. At the moment, we could choose to list the snapshots using Athena or Spark. We won't show how to do that in this video, but I have got a snapshot ID that we can use. So we're just going to update our query and we can use the setting iceberg snapshot ID and then put in our ID and run the query. And this time we've got 47.59 million records. We can also do it with a timestamp. So this timestamp here is basically the same time as that snapshot ID. And again, you get the same result. Finally, let's have a look at partition pruning. So partition pruning lets us skip irrelevant data files. At the moment, it only works with identity transforms and time-based transforms. So we're going to write a query here to do a count and then get the unique user ID count from the hits daily partition table. And then we're going to do a filtering based on the date. And we're going to start by doing it without the partition pruning. And again, we'll speed it up for the video, but you see we eventually get back our result of the count and the unique user IDs, and it takes just over 12 seconds. Now let's update the query to turn the partition pruning on. And then we'll run that and you see it kind of runs. We'll speed it up a little bit and it's done in just under six seconds. It's about two times quicker. We'll then write this query here against the query log table so we can see how many files were actually pruned by each. And you can see the more recent query, the one where we have the pruning turned on is at the top and that's pruned 19 files. And the one at the bottom where it was turned off didn't prune anything. So we would be going to be doing some more videos on lake houses. But for now, check out this playlist for more ClickHouse videos.